This week at the House of Valentina, the camellias are in bloom in the garden and we are decorating the table with them. I cannot wait to share the Amazon finds of the week that are perfect for going for long walks and hikes in the woods. We're also diving into the pictures from the basement. I'm telling you the things you're gonna see, you're never gonna unsee. And to top it all off, we are getting the ultimate cozy on with my favorite Greek soup. This recipe is gonna blow your minds and I cannot wait to share everything with you this week. The last few days have been very cold and wet and we've been entertaining ourselves inside. The kids have had little bits of colds and so I've been making my famous, passed down literally generation to generation, our Greek ovo lemon soup, which is a Greek egg lemon soup that is equivalent to Greeks as the chicken noodle soup is to the American soul. And it is delicious, it's heartwarming, and I cannot wait to make that with you today. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's talk about the dining room right now and how we're making it feel so cozy in here. Because let's face it, this time of year we can get a little bit drugged down in our mood and I, I actually love this time of year <laughs> because I love the cozy factor. So I love turning on the lights. You can see I've got the wall sconces on. Those are on a dimmer and that makes a huge difference. I've also got the overhead, well, the overhead light is not actually on at the moment, but usually in the evenings it is actually on and it's dimmed and creating a feeling of coziness during this time of year becomes paramount to your mood and the atmosphere inside of your home. So rather than getting the blues, celebrate it. It's an excuse to stay inside. So we tend to have longer meals and to linger at the table. We tend to sit by the fire this time of year. And so I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Uh, what else have been done? So I've got candles going in here. The really, that fragrance in here is just amazing. Also bringing in some sort of brightness into the room. So these are actually faux paper whites. Uh, I didn't, I, I forgot to, to actually plant mine. <laughs> So uh, yeah, so we had to do the faux ones this year. We'll do better next year. But the other thing that I've done is that I've really set the table. I find that if you set the table, it takes seconds to do this, but it really just helps the atmosphere of your room. I really love to create just a quick little table setting. You do not have to spend a lot of time on this. You do not have to spend a lot of money. It's just easy, simple things you probably already have on hand. I love to trim just off of the bushes. Now, this time of year is a little bit more of a challenge because it is winter, but camellias are in full bloom and they're absolutely gorgeous. So just creating a simple vase. Uh, this is the one I just got at Ikea while we were there. I also filled the table with some beautiful smoky glassware. This is from Ikea, but I'll also leave a link for something similar. If it's sold out, it keeps selling out. Uh, yeah, and then just bringing in some really nice uh, little simple flatware. I've got the silver chargers out, which just makes everything feel really elegant. And it's just basically an extra plate. It doesn't have to be fancy to feel elegant. And I think that's what makes this time of year so special is when the, the light outside is so dim, it's smoky and foggy, and you can use that to your advantage. Even during the day, you can feel the ambiance in here. It's wonderful. I also have candles going in here. These are the ones that we got at uh, Ikea. Let me see, I can't remember the scent. I'll have to put the scent down below. I got a couple of these. They were actually really inexpensive and I got a couple so I could have one at each end of the dining table. Then, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite tricks. We saw these in this beautiful French restaurant the first time and now I've seen them in a lot of restaurants. Some of the time they're using them in place of candles, some of the time they're adding them in with, with it as well. So you could have it just sitting by itself. You could, you, it's cordless, so that's what's so cool. You could use them anywhere around the house, not just the table. You could use them on a nightstand. You could use them on your fireplace. They can go outdoors. They're pretty amazing, but you can set them by themselves or also add candles in. But either way, all you do is look, <laughs> touch it and it comes on and off and then you can press and hold and it will dim. So it really adds not only a little bit of romance, but it also adds quite a nice ambiance into the space and uh, <laughs> a little ding there as it goes down against the glass. But I do think that just, you guys have seen 
my little set, the little fluted set. Ikea does have one like this. If you're shopping at Ikea, they do have a fluted set as well, but I already had this set from Amazon. It's almost sold out. So if you're interested, you might want to go ahead and grab it before it's gone. Uh, I should probably grab some more because <laughs> I use them all the time, but actually, I've had these for about a year, I think, at this point, and we are so rough on them. We throw them in the dishwasher, microwave. I mean, we are not careful with them at all. And they're a bone china, which just means that they're actually, they're actually extra strong when they're made well, and they should last longer, and these definitely have. They don't have a single chip or scratch or anything in them. They've been absolutely amazing. I'm really, truly blown away by these. And yeah, you can just um, throw them in the dishwasher. You don't have to do anything fancy with them, but they definitely make the table feel nice and dressed up. I think also adding in a beautiful napkin is also another really nice way, just adding a little bit of warmth and texture. We did lay down a runner on the table, and the reason why is because I just got the table and I'm extra paranoid about getting water on it and stuff. And that does help because now you don't have to have a coaster for the glassware. The glassware can sit on it. The vase can sit on it. It's just like a little nice safeguard and it looks really beautiful. I found this one on Amazon. So these little napkins are from a company called The White Company. And oh my gosh, they make incredible linens. The thickness of this linen napkin is insane. And then I just have some really simple little gold napkin rings on here. And so it doesn't have to be complicated. We actually had our dinner here last night. It was in just amazing. The ambiance was just gorgeous. But then this morning, the table is already set because I had the boys, it's one of their chores they have to do before they go to school is empty the dishwasher. And so they just reset the table. So sometimes they have to come in here and you know, kind of fluff a little bit. But generally, I've just taught them just to put it back and they love it because they don't have to worry about putting it into the pantry and where does it go. So it can actually be easier to set your table. It can actually be um, a little less of a chore. So yeah, I really love the way it feels. We really enjoyed sitting in here. I do think that having a cozy chair in your dining room really does add to the cozy factor of a space and it definitely helps you want to linger longer. So I see a lot of beautiful chairs. I mean, they're gorgeous, but they're, they don't look comfortable. I went for something that was gonna be super comfortable and also durable. So sometimes you do end up paying a little bit extra for a chair. I've got these from, um, so I've got these in here and I have the other ones in the other room from West Elm and I bought both in performance fabrics. And uh, my husband is the most paranoid that our, our youngest, who is 15, will get sauce still on the chair. So um, I told him we'd just lay something over the chair here. <laughs> but honestly, they've never spilled. Even when they were little, we've had cloth chairs for a long time. Even when the kids have spilled stuff on these chairs, it just comes right out. We use our little green machine, the little bizzle one, and it'll just pull stains right out, even out of white and light upholstery. So adding a little blanket over the side, um, this is one of my favorites from Amazon as well. It's just gorgeous. But yeah, I think it actually adds to the cozy factor. <laughs> and sometimes when we're sitting in here, I'll just use the blanket over my lap to keep me warm because I'm always cold. But let me share with you some of my favorite finds that I've also gotten from Amazon Fashion because I have been just loving shopping for the country life and also some warm, cozy things for long walks and taking the dog out and all of that. So let me bring you over here and show you what I've found. All right, so like I said, I have really been enjoying shopping for like a more rustic country life, things that are for outdoors lately, because even though it is definitely colder and wet, I still wanna be able to get outside. I think it's so, studies show that being outside in nature has a huge impact on our stress levels. It reduces anxiety. They say that it drops the risk of heart disease significantly. It's just so important. Our bodies and minds just need to be restored and nature just has a way of doing that for us. So even though it is cold and even though it's rainy, <laughs> and when we lived in Denmark, they have a saying, actually in Scandinavia, they said, there's no such thing as bad weather, just improper clothing. So <laughs> when we were there, we'd ride our bikes literally in the snow, uh, no matter if it was pouring rain or whatever, we always just went outside. You always went for walks, you had to get to work or school. There was never an excuse to not be out in nature. It just depended, you just needed to dress properly for it. So I think that's a great mentality. And I've been shopping for some things that'll keep me warm 
warm and also feel a little bit kind of chic and sophisticated. So one of those actually is this beautiful cashmere, I think it is like a cashmere wool blend from Lily Silk. I've got it layered up with my Amazon turtleneck you guys have seen me wear a million times because I absolutely love them. You don't need it for itchiness. <laughs> These sweaters are not itchy in the slightest. I just do that because I'm always cold compared to everyone else in the house. And I've found that if I double layer, it evens us all out. <laughs> I would just wear this with like my skinny little coated jeans for inside the house. And then I'll also have on, I pair that, I pair that with a knee high boot that I also found on Amazon. You guys know I have been hunting and hunting for the perfect pair of riding boots that are just literally the kind of boots that you can wear all day long. We were out yesterday at Ikea for hours and I never even once thought about my feet. <laughs> That's when you know your shoes are good because you're not even thinking about your feet or your hips or your back and you just feel so good. So these are under $100. They are absolutely amazing. I think you should definitely check them out. They look great with basically everything here on the rack and you are gonna love them because they are super duper comfy. Start with some of the dressier stuff because I think it's really fun to also have some dressier outfits we still like to go to the farm shop. We still like to go out and to the nurseries and other places. And I tend to be a little bit more dressed up. I'm gonna go to a farm to table restaurant. I wanna be a little bit more dressed up. So I have been loving this blazer. It feels like it's made with wool, but it is, it's wonderful. It looks like it's got that British countryside kind of look to it. And I've been nipping in the waist with a belt. And I just think that this is one of the prettiest pieces. I love the fabric of it. And the pattern is just absolutely gorgeous. It's so easy to wear. Then I also found this one. This was a little bit of a splurge, forgive me. I have been looking for a jacket like this and I cannot find one that doesn't cost this much, so please forgive me. Um, but it is just absolutely gorgeous. It's got these beautiful buttons. It's got the military kind of style on that collar like this. And it just is spectacular. This one is made, and sometimes that does increase the price, this one is made, yeah, with 100% wool. And so a lot of times these pieces will be a little bit more expensive, but this is a piece that you buy for life. And so I just, I, I just had to have it. So I <laughs> love it. I think you'll love it too. It looks great with like a skinny pair of jeans and boots. Looks great with, oh, with a skirt, oh, a little pleated skirt. Oh, jeans, the options are endless with a blazer jacket kind of like this, with a jacket kind of blazer like this. And this one's not itchy at all, but it'll keep you nice and warm and cozy, even if you're a little bit more dressed up. This one is actually 100% cashmere. Just check the tag. It's 100% cashmere. So it's around $100. But if you want one that is a little bit less in a similar kind of feel, I found this one on Amazon and very cozy. This one will definitely still keep you warm. It's a little bit lighter weight, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Definitely check this one out as well. I wear this one a lot this time of year and it definitely gives you super cozy vibes. Now enters in the vest. <laughs> and I've been kind of going crazy about it. I originally had this one in the kind of like tan, yeah, like a tan caramel kind of color. These are beautiful if you just want to throw them over your sweaters and over your turtlenecks. Just zip up and that quilting in them is just absolutely gorgeous. I feel like you guys are a little high here. Let me break it down a little bit so you can see a little bit more. There we go. Does that help? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, I think it's just really beautiful. It's got the nice pockets in it, and I wear this all the time. This has been my go-to for well over a year, and I find that it looks great with leggings. It's perfect for going for walks, if you're gonna just be out in your own yard or garden, or of course, if you're running errands, it's kind of the perfect piece. I've got it in this tan color, I've got it in black, and I just absolutely love it but I wanted another color because I've been wearing it so much. I thought it'd be really nice to check it out in another color. So in enters the brown vest. Oh my gosh, this one is so 
beautiful. I love this trim color and contrasting. It's like, this is like a caramel brown and then this is more of like a rich, deep chocolate brown. And it is just the most beautiful piece. And I love just the little details up here on the collar. You've got that contrast all the way down the zipper and on the, uh, on the shoulder. It nips in perfectly at the waist, not too tight, not too tight. <laughs> All these I bought in my regular size. And this one has the pockets as well with the little button on the front just to give it a little bit of detail. And it is just the most amazing color. They really nailed the color on this. It's just spectacular. So um, I was like, oh, I should order another one of these. And then I was like, I already ordered a couple other ones. So let me show you those. <laughs> All right, so I am completely in love with this piece. It's got the amazing waxed fabric across the top, which makes it super durable, which is of course what the British are kind of known for. And the quilting in it is spectacular. I absolutely love it. I love the snap detail across the top and on the pockets. Let me just slip it on for a second. I'm absolutely blown away by this piece. It's it's warm, but it's not heavy. It's really lightweight. And this little collar is just gorgeous up here. You could fold it down, you could keep it up. It zips and snaps. You could wear it open, you could wear it closed. And it's perfect for when you're just running outside, if you're just gonna be watering the plants, if you're gonna take the dog out, if you're gonna go for a walk in the woods, if you're gonna go for a walk in the neighborhood, right? Like. So many uses and the color is just spectacular. So that is definitely a keeper. I'm so excited about it. So yeah, um, and this one, this one is great because you could also layer a coat over it as well. So it is nice because it's, it's gonna take you all the way through spring as well. So yeah, what a score, right? <laughs> then, then from the same brand, I found this absolutely gorgeous fleece vest. I am in love with this piece. Look at the navy blue and the, it's like a suede kind of material around the trim work here. It is just beautiful. And it is like the heaviest weight fleece and it is just absolutely stunning. I also like the fact that on the bottom, it actually has a little drawstring that you can pull and tighten the bottom up just a little bit if you want it to be a little bit more fitted. And then the pockets are also lined in fleece and they zip, which is great because if you're like us and you take the dogs out or you like to go for walks, uh, whether you're in a neighborhood or you're on a nice big piece of land, it is nice to have that zipper and you can put treats in there. You can have your hand sanitizer in there if you're gonna be out somewhere. Uh, I always take tissues with me. <laughs> you know, just little things and you've got them in your pocket and they're nice and secure. So uh, let me show you this one as well. So look at how nice it is to just zip it up throw it over whatever you've got on, and you've got this amazing layer that is just so cozy, and the colors on these are just truly exquisite. So very cozy, definitely gonna keep me warm for the season. Well, these are just a few of my favorite finds. I'll leave links down below in case you wanna have cozy delivered to your door as well. One of my favorite things to do when it's cold and rainy outside is to get busy inside the house. With some of those projects that are always on your agenda and you never seem to get to. One of those for me is organizing my photos. So let me bring you over here and I can show you how I am organizing my photos and also how I am creating an art wall in my closet. All right, so as you guys know, we lived overseas for 12 years. Raise your kids abroad. If you haven't seen our backstory video, we've got one over on the main home channel. And we also have one where you get to see us moving into this house and we go into that a little bit. But either way, what happened was that we moved overseas when I was pretty young. <laughs> we had Haley when I was 21 and moved overseas with her when she was a baby. We came back um, just long enough to have our second son and then went back overseas. But basically what happened over the years for us, and I think it's something that even whether you've moved a million times or not, you're gonna understand this, is that things started to just pile up randomly. Now, my parents and my sister were like literally lifesavers because they allowed us to store our photos and some of our really precious mementos in their house while we were gone. But you can tell that things just got out of hand. I have the cutest picture of my dad and 
some of the nephews, and Haley's tucked in there too. I've got this one of my mom holding our son Parker when he was obviously a baby. This is Jamila holding Landon. He was born while we were living in Morocco, and um, she's one of our best friends. And it, yeah, <laughs> you're gonna get all teary-eyed. <laughs> Uh, she doesn't have the best internet connection, so I'm hoping we'll get to visit with her the next time we get back to Morocco. But I've got all these precious memories and they're just sitting in this box. You can see, I mean, is this really a picture of me? This is literally a picture from 1987, okay? Here I am, this is, uh, oh, this is actually here in, this is a Marietta. Oh yeah, this is Miss Albers. This is uh, great, this is third grade here. So yeah, I can't believe I have this just sitting in there. That's me right here in third grade. That's when, that's the year that we moved to Atlanta. I lived in Virginia and Texas is where I was born. And so uh, this is really random stuff. <laughs> you guys probably know how it is that you've got all this random stuff. Oh, oh wasn't I so cute? <laughs> Oh, my mom gave this to me recently and I'm like, I don't even know where this came from. I mean, I have like a dance skirt in here. <laughs> it's just such random stuff and uh, random medals don't even, oh, this is when I ran a 5K and I won the award because I was the only one in my age group that ran it. <laughs> My mom was pregnant with my little brother and I didn't want to leave her behind, but we finished the race and somehow I won and got a medal that year. <laughs> well, how do we store this stuff? It is really important to store your photos. They can be stored in Rubbermaids, but it's not necessarily the best way to store them because they just end up in big jumbles and they just end up in big piles and definitely storing them in random boxes that are not archival and uh, acid free will definitely destroy your photos over time. And they do say that storing them in boxes like these that are acid free and archival will help them last longer and also make sure that if you're going to make notes because yeah, see my mom wrote with pen on the back of here. It's not the end of the world, but a lot of, it's not the end of the world to write in pen, but it is better to write with pencil. So I've ordered a variety of sizes. So you can see this one's not gonna fit in here, but it will fit the four by six pictures upright. And so I've tried over the years to store in boxes like these and it just got a little bit out of hand. I also, I ordered these off of Amazon and they have quite a few sizes. So this is nice for things that need to flat lay. If you've got eight by tens, if you've got eight by tens, these all will easily fit into this size. And so you're able to store things. Oh my gosh, I shouldn't show this to the internet. <laughs> Right there, baby, glamour shots. Who's got some of these in their photos? Please tell me I'm not the only one. Do you guys remember glamour shots? <laughs> oh boy, we had so much fun. I mean, I loved, that was my own sequin dress and I loved that sequin dress. So for all of you who wonder if I really did grow up in the 80s with all that big hair, oh yes, oh yes. And they made it even bigger that day. But some of those are just gonna be too big to go in here. The other thing I will say, these did not come with note cards. Normally, I do like it when they come with note cards and you can just buy a set of the index ones. I'll leave a link for the ones that I end up getting, but you can also order things by date. All right, so this one here is one that I've had uh, forever and ever, and it is done in chronological order. And I do, so I do have the little cards in here that do say what is in, in that section. And I also, can see how this one, see how this comes with the little cards. That is really helpful. So each, each section, I know what's gonna be in it. And I tuck any negatives that I have into the back of the box. This is how I normally store photos. And even though these, you know, this is a, a representation of my style when I was very young, uh, I'm gonna be switching over to these and I'm gonna organize my entire collection of photos and get everything kind of set because the longer you wait to do this, the less likely it is that you're gonna remember what things are and <laughs> no one else is gonna know what this stuff is either. So you can't hold them accountable, right? Um, yeah, it looks like we're gonna maybe get a little bit of sunshine for a few minutes. It won't last. <laughs>
<laughs> let's hop into the kitchen and make some Greek soup because I am just ready to get my cozy on. I'm so excited to share with you my recipe for avalomata soup. My family's Greek, as so many of you know, and when someone has a cold, if it's cold outside, uh, <laughs> we make this actually all year round, just to be honest with you. It's kind of like the chicken soup of the soul. <laughs> And we just love it as Greeks. And it's just, it warms your heart, it warms your soul, and it really warms up your home. So this is a really easy recipe that is made mostly with uh, lemons. You've got some eggs. We've got chicken broth. You can always use your own if you wanna make your own broth. But um, those are the main ingredients here that we're gonna be using to make this soup. It's really simple. The other thing I like to do that does expand a little bit beyond my mom's original recipe is that I like I like to be able to make my own croutons to go on top. I like to jazz it up just a little bit, but we'll get to that later. For now, let's talk about citrus for a minute because right now is actually a really good time to have citrus because right now it's cold season and we all need a little boost of vitamin C and one, lem and one lemon has half of your daily dose of vitamin C in it. And this recipe is loaded with lemon. So the first thing that we're gonna do is actually fill our pot. I've got my gorgeous cast iron pot. I love this one because it really heats everything really well. And we are just going to fill this up with some chicken broth and get it boiling on on the stove. This recipe is usually made with orzo. I think that my dad's mom substituted rice because that's just what she had on hand and everybody loved it. So you can definitely do that as well. But the orzo is absolutely amazing. I have a spelt flour one that I've actually ordered off of Amazon and it's made this is an artisanal orzo and it is absolutely incredible. It has seven grams of protein in it. So getting protein and all the antioxidants of the lemons in is, it's just a power punch. And then we haven't even talked about all the great properties of eggs, right? This is why this soup is so good for you and why you're gonna love it. So I'm gonna get this into that boiling water and then we'll get on to the next step with the eggs. Now's the time to cut our lemons in half. I've got a few that I bought from the store because I didn't quite have enough of my Myers lemons. So these are definitely gonna make it taste just as great, but the Myers lemons, they do have a sweetness to them. So if you can grab Myers lemons at your store or grow them, I highly recommend it. I'm just gonna cut those in half and then using my little citrus, I don't even know what this thing's called. <laughs> citrus thingy. <laughs> I'm just gonna squeeze, such a squeezer, probably what they're called. Uh, I bought this one actually in Italy. It's so pretty with the olive wood, I love it. But yeah, you're just going to simply squeeze out all the juice. I like doing it over just this little mini sieve because then it catches all of the pulp and all of the seeds. All right, so here's where the real magic is happening. We are gonna crack six eggs into this bowl. I like cracking them in the bowl first because then you can make sure you don't have any shells in there and then we're just gonna pop them into the blender. So now we're gonna take the eggs are in here. We're going to add all of that delicious lemon juice and a heaping tablespoon of flour into here. And we are gonna get this blended up and then we're gonna add the broth into this and start to get the soup nice and thick. All right, I'm gonna take this mixture and I am going to put it into my bowl here because we don't want the eggs to get cooked. And that's what will happen if we pour our broth into it too quickly. So what you'll do is take a little bit of the broth out of, out of the pot and it is still hot. So you need it to be hot because you want it to warm the eggs up, but you need to do it slowly. So what I'll do is very slowly pour just a little bit of this in at a time. 
and keep it moving. You're, you need one hand moving with the whisk and the other hand pouring very, very slowly because what we're doing is we're tricking the eggs into being warmed up very slowly so they don't scramble. <laughs> Trust me, I've eaten plenty of these when I was younger learning how to make it. With scrambled eggs inside of it, it tastes just as good. <laughs> We have little streaks of cooked eggs in it. So don't stress if you're just getting the hang of this, but it's just a matter of going really slow. And then once those that egg mixture has been heated up, then it, it can go right back into the big pot and it'll thicken the soup up. It'll have that nice eggy warm taste to it and it's just gonna all come together in just a second. And then basically that's it. We're gonna add some salt and some pepper. I was thinking about adding my fennel salt into this. My mom would just, oh! <laughs> you can just use regular salt and pepper, but I think I'm gonna add the fennel salt cause it'll add a little bit of extra flavor in here and just amp it up just a little bit. I know, you know, I'm a little bit of a rebel. <laughs> All right, let's put it in there. suggest always having bread to serve with your soup because you're gonna love having something to dip into it so I always buy two baguettes one so we can just slice it and serve it with the soup but also I do like to have one that I'm gonna take and I'm just simply going to cut this into cubes then I'm gonna give it a nice drizzle of olive oil a little bit more of my fennel uh, scented salt then I'm gonna go and grab some thyme from my garden that way I can add some nice herbs on top of this stick it in the oven and let it crisp up they're super easy to make and they take just a few minutes and they should be done around the same time as the soup so it all just comes together perfectly all right let's do this all right you guys come in with me all right let's uh let's go around this way because i want to be able to show you the lemon tree because i pulled it in because we had freezing temps the other day and it looks so pretty in here that i've left it and uh jack actually picked the other lemons off this tree and i was like oh <laughs> i didn't know i th thought i was being <laughs> thought i was being helpful this moment you wait a whole year for them to ripen and to pick them but you can see come up close look at all of the little blossoms that we have coming in so this is gonna smell so good and I have one I've managed to keep Jack from not picking it. it's got a little bit of green left on it so I'm trying to let it stay just a little while longer that way we can make another round of the soup maybe next week but let's go out here and uh, we've got the cushions out. Oh, look at the, show them the Gila Bores. Look at how our Gila Bore that we bought with my mom, how they perked up and have survived those freezing temps and the ivy that's in there as well. And then my thyme, crazy enough. That smells so good. It's actually a lemon thyme. So this is gonna be amazing on those croutons. And I'm just gonna snip some here. And uh, I kind of do it to where it's not like, I don't want to make one area look bald. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of snip randomly. Hopefully you guys can hear me over the uh, fountain there. But uh, yeah, just grab a little handful. You can grab a little bit extra because I'm going to garnish with it as well. But this, we brought this in when it was freezing and then today it's like 60s. But yeah, this survived the winter being out here. And then yeah, it's so nice to be able to use from your garden. So let's go back inside.
All right, well, let's just say that it smells amazing in the house and everybody's dying to have some of this. So I'm just gonna finish this off with a little drizzle, a light little drizzle of olive oil for the top and voila. That is not one of the prettiest things you have ever seen. Oh my goodness, guys, this is so hearty and so beautiful, but it is so simple to make. I think that you guys will absolutely love it. So I'm gonna leave the recipe for you so you can try it out yourselves. All right, the real test of a recipe is not just beauty, but flavor. So shall we try this? Yes. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna get a little bit of that olive oil in there. It's gonna be hot still. See how thick it is? This is how I like it. <laughs> Mom doesn't make her th this thick, but I love it. So do you. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Perfect. Best you've ever made. Perfect amount of so lemon. Good. I love a little bit of that fennel in there. Mm-hmm, oh. mm-mm. I gotta try one of these. So then you can take these and dip them. <laughs> this is how I usually eat it in private, okay? Yeah. We're with friends here. This is how you're gonna wanna eat it. Mm -hmm. Oh, sweet. <laughs> That's so good. Oh my gosh. How can anything be that good? Kids, wow. We're gonna tell the kids we're gonna have to eat something. Guys, it's amazing. I'm so, gonna eat this entire bowl. yeah, we're gonna finish eating here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dinner is set for us. Uh, I'll leave the recipe down below for you guys if you want to. You, you want to try it out. <laughs> but I'll definitely leave the links below. I'm glad I've got the kitchen, or I'm glad I've got the dining room set for soup for tonight, and we're gonna have a good time, aren't yeah, we? I can't wait. I know. So, thank you so much for joining me. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and let us know if you love our content coming out with some variety here. So much fun. Let us know if you're enjoying it in the comments section, and we will see you in the next one. Until then, bye. bye.